this year is the 30 year anniversary of the Bimini Shark Lab. Established in 1990 by Dr. Samuel Gruber, known to many as Doc, Doc was a pioneer scientist in the field of shark science. Um, when we originally set up the lab, he set up the lab and we were affiliated with the University of Miami where Doc was a professor. But today we run and operate as a non-profit organisation that relies on donations, sponsors and grants to fund the exciting research projects at the lab. We're a 24-7 research station and conduct research all year round on the different elasma rank species we find around the island. Um, and we offer year round internship opportunities to early career scientists and conservationists who want to gain hands on field experience and working at a remote field station with elasma ranks. The three main missions of the lab um, that were established by DOC was firstly to gain more understanding and knowledge on the biology of sharks and rays and um, to educate future scientists at an undergraduate and graduate level and finally to disseminate our research results to the wider audience and to aid in the conservation and awareness of elasma ranks. Before we talk about some of the incredible research that's gone on at the station, none of this would have been possible without the leadership and guidance of Dr Gruber. Clem, can you tell us more about some of Dr Gruber's early work and achievements and how that led up to the founding of the Bimini Shark Club 30 years ago? Of course. So while the Shark Lab as a field station is 30 years old, Doc's career and his research interests in the lemon shark actually bearing quite a long time before that. So initially working out of the University of Miami, Doc conducted much of his research through cruises, um, which is still quite a common method of accessing a field study, uh, but it only provides access in the short term. He visited Bimini on one of these cruises while specifically looking for lemons, and he found a perfect model population right here. So he then conducted a lot of his pioneering research on this population throughout much of the 80s, and this included physiology, so for example, looking at their visual capacity, and their olfaction sensitivity, um, space use, which includes some of the first ever telemetry studies to be done on sharks, and even classical conditioning studies, which was able to show that sharks were capable of learning a response to a certain stimuli. Here, under the electron microscope, we're obtaining the kinds of detailed information necessary to reveal the ultrastructure of the rods and cones in the great white shark retina. The lab was then founded in 1990, basically in order to access this population year round, and that allowed us to expand our research. So this includes establishing two long-term research projects. So the first one being our lemon shark census, um, or our PIT project, which has been running since 1996, and our monthly longline surveys, which have been happening across three decades now. Both of these projects have had big impacts. So for example, Dr. Kevin Feldheim used a lot of our PIT um, DNA data to be able to establish lemon shark family trees. And Dr. Steve Kessel was able to um, publish a paper looking at catch per unit effort trends in lemon sharks on long lines across three whole decades. Um, principal investigators and scientists at the lab since Doc founded it have studied things like space use, uh, behavioural ecology, refuge use, personality, metabolic rates, um, even general aquatic biodiversity of the system, and more recently expanding into understanding other elasma branks, so our tiger shark population, our great hammerheads, and our southern stingrays and eagle rays too. So throughout Doc's 50-year research career, he was involved in nearly 200 publications. He mentored 35 graduate students. Um, he spoke at 125 meetings. He formed and chaired the IUCN Shark Specialist Group and co-founded the American Elasma Branks Society, where he served as president. So much of this centered around his dedication for the lemon sharks and the islands of Bimini. And that makes the lemon shark population of Bimini one of the best understood in the world. And as one of our main missions is to aid in the education of future scientists at an undergraduate and graduate level, we're really proud to have been able to assist with the completion of almost 20 PhDs and numerous masters and undergraduate theses over the past 30 years. And while it's incredible to talk about the research output that's come from the work conducted at the station during this time, it is also important to mention the number of university courses that have been held at the lab, research experiences that are open to the public, and the number of tour guests who visit us every year um, and to learn more about the sharks of Bimini and the research conducted at the station. As well as numerous TV shows and film crews that come to join us to film the different shark species around the island and the incredible research ongoing at the lab. It's important to highlight the impact they have had about spreading awareness about shark biology and conservation. So what does the future look like for the shark lab? So over the past 30 years, Bimini has really laid the foundations for shark science. But moving forwards, we strive to facilitate that high impact research and continually stay aligned with the three missions that Doc set the lab up with initially. Um, physically, we're also renovating the facility and we hope to build a new station in the near future. So there's a lot of exciting things to come.
Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comment section below um, and we will answer them as soon as we can. Uh, and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the other research projects ongoing at the station, make sure you check out some of our other videos.